think there's any validity to the the argument that Latin America may not have done as well as Canada, the United States have done because they stayed Catholic more than Protestant. So is there any validity to the idea that Catholicism kind of um, suppresses economic success? And, and it's, not, it's not even just Latin America. If you look at Europe, Southern Europe, which is more Catholic, is poorer than Northern Europe, which is more Protestant. Um, uh, parts of Eastern Europe, which are more Catholic, uh, like Poland, historically have been um, not as Westernized as Protestant West, I guess. So there probably is a case to be made that there's something there. Uh, I think that, that Catholicism, while being more intellectual than Protestantism, so Catholics are more intellectual, they're more philosophical, and therefore they also take their ideas more seriously. And as a consequence, I think that they are much more opposed uh, to self-interest, to the pursuit of profit. It took the Catholic Church until the late 1800s to say usury was okay. Uh, usury meaning interest, any kind of interest. So banking was sinful all the way through the 19th century, even though you know, the, the, church, the church itself would, do, would issue loans, but they didn't like competition, I guess. Um, so it, it certainly is the case that, um, that I think Catholics took religion more seriously. So Luther and Calvin, they said, for example, with regard to usury, they said, because this world doesn't really matter, because even before we're born, I don't know how many Protestants take this seriously, but before we're born, God already knows whether we're going to go to hell or to heaven. And therefore, that's Luther and Calvin. Therefore, there's Darius. I think he, he's made it. There's Jonathan. Therefore, it doesn't matter what you do in this world. You, so you can sin. You can do whatever in this world. That's fine. And as a consequence, they said, yeah, usury is fine. We don't care. Because in the, in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God, there's no usury. There's no interest. There are no bankers. But in this world, eh, it doesn't matter what you do in this world. And whether you go to hell or heaven has already been determined. So it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, there's no, you know, everything's pre-written. Everything's known. God knows. So if, you, if you're sinning, that's because you were destined to sin. So it, nothing matters. So there's a sense in which Protestantism, at least in its origin, gave up on virtue, gave up on being a good Christian. In, in that kind of sense that this world is evil and bad anyway, so what the hell. And Catholicism still, you know, tried, they tried to live virtuous lives. Uh, it's, you know, they try to live by the Christian ethics and therefore that retarded their, uh, their ability to embrace capitalism because they, they didn't want to embrace banking, they didn't want to embrace profits, and they didn't want to embrace self-interest. That makes sense. Yes, thank you. I mean, the on, the flip side of that is, with regard to Latin America specifically, is that up until about 1913, a country like Argentina was just as wealthy as the United States. I mean, it was like 85 percent or something like that on per capita GDP, and it's really only, at least in the case of Argentina, I don't know about the rest of Latin America, it's only in the 20th century since 1913, that, that progress was retarded. And that's when they embraced a variety of different forms of authoritarianism. Now, you can link the authoritarianism to Catholicism to some extent, because I think Catholicism is inherently authoritarian because there's a Pope. And Protestant, in, in the, with Protestants, you have, you have direct communication with God. In, in Catholicism, it goes through the Pope. So there's a there's an authoritarian already there, so they're more open to authoritarianism. But it's also the case that Latin America, although the, I don't think this would be the case of Italy and Spain, but it is true that in Latin America, um, there was a strong influence of continental philosophy. That is, whereas the U.S. and Canada were strongly influenced by Anglo-Saxon philosophy, by the Enlightenment, the Scottish Enlightenment by thinkers like John Locke and Adam Smith and Hume and people like that, who are healthier philosophically. Uh, the, 
the South Americans were influenced by Kant, Hegel, Schopenhauer, Marx, uh, and, and that tradition, kind of a real German tradition. So it's a combination of the religiosity, but also, I think, just the, the philosophical influences on the different cultures and, and why the different philosophies influence different places, partially where the people came from uh, and, and partially maybe back to the religion. All right. Now, there are many philosophies that would offer that to an individual. Oh, yes. There are religions that offer it. There yes. are forms of government that offer it. How does... Not forms of government. That's politics. That's a different branch. That comes later. Well, yes, but governments in some areas, in some instances, would define for you choices or dictate to you oh, yeah. how to live your life. Yeah. But I'll retract governments and just say religions are yeah. philosophies. How does objectivism differ from the philosophies that many of us have been exposed to in our youths? Uh, philosophies based upon religions, theologians, dogmatists. The f very first difference. Uh, objectivism tells you that it is not right, it is not proper to men to take anything on faith. Religion is a matter of faith. You accept a religion emotionally or because you were born to it. You have not chosen it rationally. What objectivism will tell you is that reason, man's reason is his basic means of survival. That is the most important faculty which he has and he has to guide his life and make his choices by means of his rational faculty. He has to make his own choices, but he has to know how to make them. It is immoral for him to act on his emotions, to be guided by the whim of the moment. That objectivism holds as very wrong, very immoral. And morality, in fact, consists of following your reason to the best of your ability. So that rationality is the basic virtue from which all the others proceed. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, Show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.